Cool. I've been doing this for about 15 years now. Just clocked up 30 years as a therapist. And basically, we have seen literally hundreds of people with ME, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, and Lyme. So our system seems to work pretty well with everybody. It is not a cure-all. It's not a magic bullet. It's something that takes time to do. Um, what I'm going to do is give you a little overview of what the parent treatment is, why lymphatic drainage is so important. And then we'll go into the, I'm not going to go into depth, particularly into depth, because you could do different lectures on different parts of the lymphatic system. You should be able to see here on the picture, these erased lymph ducts coming from the axilla across to the drainage point for the lymph because the lymph drains in through the subclavian veins at this area here. So we're looking to see if there's any blockage here and we're looking for these raised lymph ducts. Now, they, when you can see this is in a very extreme case, you don't usually see that. You can usually feel it, but you can't actually see it that well. They're the things that we're looking for and we have certain trigger points where we press and if those points are sore, then we know that there is a likelihood that the sympathetic nervous system isn't working properly because it's where an area of sympathetic nerves and sensory nerves come together. These are like the parent points. Okay, so we would be looking here at the cilia plexus, which is the solar plexus just under the breastbone to see if there's any soreness there. And then we come to the nipple here and we move out about one centimetre or three centimetres. It depends. And then you press into that area that is actually called the parent's point because Ray discovered it. And that, if that is sore, that's another indicator for us. We'd also be looking at these lymph nodes here to see whether these are swollen and basically coming down lower, I can't show it in this picture, but coming down lower into the thoracic duct. That's the kind of thing we're looking for, pain in the chest, pain at the celiac plexus. We also check the cranial rhythms to see whether they are working optimally or if there's any problems. And we look on the body for stretch marks. Now, if there are any new stretch marks on the body, we know that the collagen in the system is breaking down. So we know then that things just aren't working properly and we need to do something about it. Uh, one of the things that interests us when we're doing the questionnaires is, has the person had tonsillitis in the past? Because that formed part of the lymphatic system. Have they had adenoid problems? Again, another part of the lymphatic system. Have they had any surgery around the chest area? Because that can cut across the lymph ducts and cause problems with uh, getting the lymph through to its drainage points. Uh, a case in point is if somebody's had a mastectomy, then they've probably taken the lymph nodes from under the axilla and out of the chest. And so the lymph can't get through. And it's because the lymph ducts have been cut away and there's no drainage there. This area here, this is the area where you'll get a flattening. When we are actually testing, when we're examining, we will stroke down this area. That's why you can see the two red marks there, because we want to see how that area fills and how quickly it will dissipate again, so that we know whether there is a stagnation in that part of the spine. For us, the main things to look for are people that have had tonsillitis, people that have had sinus problems most of their life, people that are showing signs of poor drainage that get clogged ears, uh, that have had fatigue, that have had a lot of stress in their life, that have uh, had illnesses that they just didn't recover from. They can all point to a buildup of toxin in the body. And usually as you go back from birth and come up, you will find things that have happened in people's lives that have caused this stress to be building probably without them even knowing. If you look at the lymphatic system, you can see it comes all the way up through the body and then you get to the lymph nodes. Lymph nodes are very prevalent in the groin area 
that's one of the main areas. The main areas are starting in the back of the knee in the popliteal cavity. You'll find that there are a lot of lymph nodes in there and you can get people with swelling in that area. Sometimes you get people that have got raised lymph nodes here at the groin. Once we're examining you, we will palpate around the stomach area because that will tell us if there's any discomfort there. We've got an idea there's a problem in the lymph there. This area here on the main thoracic duct, what you have with that is, if you read the medical textbooks again, they will tell you there's no pump on the lymph. Basically it's moved by movement of muscle and flow of blood. But back in the sixties, it was found by an eminent surgeon when he was operating that he could see this thoracic duct pumping. So at post-mortem they had a look and this is smooth muscle like your heart. So if it's smooth muscle, it must pump. So if that becomes interfered with and it's not pumping properly because there's a blockage up here at the subclavian veins, then that's going to mess your whole lymph system up. And the thing to remember about the lymphatic system, it is the body's waste disposal system. And if that packs up, you will be dead in 48 hours because your body will just be full of toxins. Now, as you come up, you can then see that you've got the next big cluster of lymph nodes at the axilla, which is the underarm. And then it comes across from there and back into the main thoracic duct up and it drains away mainly over to the left side and secondary to the right side. And our job, when we are examining, we usually find that these are blocked here. And because these are blocked here, the lymph that has gone up to the brain then can't come back down again. So it's stuck, it can't get away. So what happens is we have to clear this blockage here. So in our treatment, we will do lymphatic drainage over this area. We'll also do the back and get the lymphatic drainage going in that area. And the neck needs to be drained down this way to get the toxin away from the head. And we will also do cranial sacral therapy to ensure that the um, lymph is going from the brain down through the cerebral fluid around the spine back up again and away. It's necessary to do that because it has to get it out. Otherwise it really does hinder the sympathetic nervous system. Now, once the sympathetic nervous system is having problems, you'll start to get high problems. Uh, you won't be able to build saliva. You'll get a dry mouth. Uh, your heart may beat faster or it may be that it has very poor rhythm. Uh, you can't get your breathing properly because a lot of people find that they get out of breath very, very easily. And that's because the airway is being constricted. Uh, it means that your stomach, when you're digesting your food, you just can't eat. You may not have an appetite or you may be sick if it's bad enough that your toxicity is up high enough. Some people vomit and certainly have a lot of symptoms of nausea. Uh, it stops your gallbladder working so you're not making bile to digest your food. Uh, your small intestines, again, things aren't broken down properly. Um, so instead of it coming in as a mulch it, to the main bowel, the small intestine here, coming in through here and up uh, the ascending bowel, transverse and down and through the anus. If that comes in and it's not coming in as mulch, then it will be very dry coming in here. This can't take away the nutrients to pass around the body from the main bowel. And it was gonna cause you problems all around, constipation. Once you get constipated, if you're constipated long enough, then you'll get bypasses, so you'll get diarrhea. And you may find you're swinging from constipation to diarrhea. And that's basically what it is. Because if you keep eating and drinking, this has got to come in and it's got to go somewhere, so it has to bypass. Uh, okay, it also affects bladder. We get people with bladder problems, but one of the big things is we get women 
that have terrible period problems, everything's out of whack because the hormones are taken out of whack because if you've got toxins in the brain, it's going to start affecting your hypothalamus. So your sense of smell and taste is going and you know, also your hormones are losing regulation and they're being passed out wrong messages then to the parts of the body and really got to overcome that one. So, uh, basically, the lymphatic system is important. We've got to get it drained down. So as I said, we drain the top of the body so that we can get the back and the top of the body going to push through the subclavicles to get the drainage going because once we can get that going and we can get this going, things get much clearer and much better. Um, basically, um, with the treatments, we bring people in once a week for 12 weeks. And then at 12 weeks, we do a complete reassessment. So we go through the forms again, not the whole life story because we, that probably hasn't changed in 12 weeks, but we go through the rest of the forms to see how many of the symptoms you've got, what sort of score you've got on the multiple choice questionnaire so we know how bad your symptoms are, whether you were right over to everything being exactly like you to coming back to it going away. Um, we also check the body over again to see if the perin points have all eased off, whether they're still as painful, whether they're not as painful, whether the lymph ducts have actually um, started to devaricose so that things are moving through more easily. Um, so basically we did have 12 weeks to do a reassessment and then hopefully we can move people fortnightly, see them for a few times fortnightly, get them up to monthly, monthly to six monthly. And then after a year, we ask them to come back. Like I say, I've been doing this 15 years. I've only ever had two people come back after a year because more or less when people are better, they forget about you. So <laughs> uh, it's just one of those things. Um, so basically, that's how we work along with the pairing technique. Now, having said that, we will work on the technique as a model for 12 weeks. After that, we really do start to bring it into the person and what that person needs. Sometimes, because they've got a lot of achy muscles, tight muscles, especially with fibromyalgia, you have to do a lot of myofascial stretching. You have to do a lot of stretching. You have to teach a lot of stretches for home. You have to look at diet. The thing with diet is you don't want to be having dairy. You don't want to be having wheat. They're things that are modified and dairy is not good for you. Dairy is made for cows. It's not made for human beings. Um, so basically all those sort of things aren't good for you because one thing they cause mucus in your body, which will cause sinus problems, which again adds to the drainage because when the brain drains for its lymph, basically where it drains from is the cribriform plate. Now, that's it. That's what it looks like. That's in the base of your skull. It's under your eyes. And these little holes here are where the lymph has to drain through. Now, if you have sinus problems, they will be blocked. And then the lymph is trying to find other ways to go. You might find you get watery eyes. You might feel like you've got water in your ears. Um, and you may feel you've got a watery run in the back of your throat. And that's because the lymph has to find a way out. Is This is the cover form. And these are the, plate, uh, the holes in the plate. But they also have blood vessels and nerves passing through them. So the lymph has to come through with the blood vessels and nerves. So as you could imagine from that picture, there is very little room for the lymph to drain away. So that's why if the slightest blockage with sinuses, tonsillitis, anything like that is going to stop the lymph draining properly. Again, this is another picture of the cribriform. There it is. That is, gives you an idea of just how small that is inside the skull and how difficult it is for draining. So if that blocks, that is blocking your lymph from draining away. So just try and explain how we go with the lymphatic drainage massage. That will show you a little bit of what I was saying.
Just give me two seconds. Okay, this is the drainage on the neck. So you bring in down from the jaw, all the way from around the ear, down to the collarbone. So that, that encourages drainage into the subclavian area. And you come in here, look under the jaw, down the side of the Adam's apple, again, into the collarbones. And that's important because that gets your drainage going. Um, and this piece here, this shows you um, the chest massage. So if you look in the chest area here, he's coming from the bottom of the pectorials up to the clavicle, collarbone. And this is actually split into three. So when you're doing the massage, you would start here at the outside and come up to the collarbone. So if I'm doing a massage and we're teaching somebody to do this at home, which is something that we do as part of the treatment, we give you lots of homework. You put one hand under your ear and you come to your collarbone. You put the other hand under your jaw and you come to your collarbone. You would do that 20 times. And that helps to bring it down. So 20 strokes that way and 20 strokes that way. And it all helps with the drainage from the head. Um, so we would do that and then we would work on the chest. So basically you come from here and you're coming up to the collarbone and then you come up the middle. So you come straight up through the nipple and onto the collarbone and then you pick up the sternum because there are literally thousands of little lymph nodes on the sternum, very important. And you push that up to your collarbone. So that's your drainage going there. But when you've done that drainage, you have to do your neck because it's yeah. important that you pushed up, you've got to bring that back down again to make sure it's draining. People do say, what about if I go and get a lymphatic drainage massage? My thing is don't do it. And the simple reason is if you're blocked here and somebody then goes and does your legs and everything else and brings all that lymph up, you're trying to put a quart into a pint pot and you're just going to make that blockage worse. It's extremely important that this is freed off before any other big lymphatic drainage is done. Um, with the lymph in the brain, it has to drain out through the cribriform plate. It, if it can't get that way, it will try and come through the tear ducts. It will come into the nose. It will, uh, by other routes, it will drain down to the ears. It can come through the esthetian tube in the throat. Um, so if you get a buildup of pressure in behind your ears, then quite possibly you can get a form of tinnitus. The blockages are here at the subclavian veins. So... Basically, um, the drainage comes up and through and through into the veins. It's then taken down to the heart. The heart passes it to the liver and kidneys. The liver and kidneys cleanse it. The lymph goes back on its journey around again, and the waste matter is excreted away.